What's up guys, it's Eventon here. So I've been doing wormhole content for about a month now. One of the things I kind of struggled with was just understanding what kind of content I could do uh, to feel useful, but also make some isk in the meantime, if you know, for the very first time joining a wormhole corp. So this is a more of an overview on types of content you guys can do to make some isk, or at the very least ask your corp mates some questions about this type of content so they can kind of get you started. So this is more of an overview and not an in-depth guide. I would love to make some more in-depth stuff later on. But I try to organize these by low SP requirements, alpha, low ISK investment, and kind of working my way up from there. But these are generally in no particular order. So the first one, by far and away, is salvaging. This is something you could do as literally a, a day one player. The ship I'm flying is the Cormorant. That only cost me about 6 million ISK to get into. And I really like this because it actually plays off of your other courtmates' play style. So as they're clearing some of these PvE combat sites that are filled with sleepers, Sleeper wrecks pay out really, really well. I would say between each site, I was getting anywhere between two to eight million, depending on the number of wrecks, the types of wrecks, things like that. And the reason why these are so expensive is because sleeper wrecks are needed, or I should say salvage parts, are needed to make T3 ships. So T3 cruisers, uh, T3 destroyers. And so these tend to be able to pay out really, really well. And so this is something I would highly suggest for any of you guys that are just trying to understand wormhole content, get used to the bookmarks, things like that. Um, salvaging is a great way to make some isk and get yourself familiarized with wormhole content. All right, and number two is gas huffing. I think everyone saw this coming. I've already made two or three videos on this, but with the recent industry changes, wormhole gas is needed to make a lot of capital parts and capital ships have gotten very, very expensive and it will be in high demand going forward in Evo Mines uh, future as far as we can see. But this is a really great way to make some isk. There is a bit of a paywall to get started because the gas harvesting skill book costs about 35 million. The huffers cost about five to 10 million, depending on whether you go with T1 or T2. So this is a really great way to make some isk, whether you sell it on the market. Ideally, you sell it to your court mate so they can make some reactions and make use of it. Um, but just as a friendly PSA, of course, never, never warp to an ordinary perimeter without having it cleared first. All right, number three is exploration or hacking. To be honest, this is something I haven't done a lot recently because I did a lot of this like the first six months of playing the game. So I might still be a little bit burnt out, but you can do this anywhere between a T1 exploration frigate all the way up to a T3 cruiser, just depending on the type of content that you want to do. If you want to be fit for combat as well as ganking, whatever it may be. But I've seen some court mates pull some really serious is doing this type of stuff, not only from ganking other explorers, but also just hacking some of these sites. You can get some really easy access to wormhole sites, even in NullSec too, because just the way wormholes work. So I've seen people hack ghost sites as well as sleeper sites. You just have to be careful because some of these wormhole sites will have NPC rats there initially. So you might need someone to go to those sites first and clear them out before you go into uh hacking those sites so this is something that has a very low sp uh, floor but does have a really high sp ceiling as well depending on uh, how you want to hack these sites and how much combat you want involved and number four is running the abyss i know this might sound uh very obvious and technically you can do this anywhere but running this in in your wormholes particularly like your home hole for your corporation is arguably one of the safest places you can do it in all of the game because if someone does show up to try and gank you at least hopefully you'll have the full force and protection of your corporation behind you ready to uh, kill those guys. And if you're anything uh, like my corporation, or I'm not sure how your corporation is, we have a lot of guys that are just starving for PvP uh, combat or content. So they'll be more than happy to protect you if someone is camping your Abyssal Trace and they'll come out and protect you. So this is kind of more of a friendly reminder that just because you might enjoy this kind of content before you join a Wormhole Corporation, you don't have to necessarily give it up. And this is content I haven't done too much recently because again, this is something I did a lot like the first six months when I was playing the game. So I was a little bit burnt out, but occasionally I will join other court mates if they run, want to run like duos, uh, trios. This is also a great way to get your NPC skilling spree stuff uh, knocked out. And sometimes, you know, once in a great while, the wormholes as you're rolling them and trying to find content, it's just not providing the type of content you want. So this is a really great way to kind of kill some time, make some isk, and even teach your court mates on how you run the abyss. All right, and number five is running PVE combat sites. And if I wanna go in any kind of depth on this, I'm gonna have to run anywhere between like one to three videos on how to do this stuff. But all the information you need, a lot of the information I got is a guide I found called Ashy in Space. And this seems to be like the wormhole Bible when it comes to anything PVE content related. So I'm gonna put that link down in the description below. But for some of you newer players or you're new to a wormhole corp, I suggest you stick to the C1 through C3 wormhole like PVE sites. Uh, like I said, that guide literally has all the information you need and even recommended chips that you could run uh, as well. And this is also part of the reason why I recommended this um, after I did the Abyss because the difficulty of the site seems to scale at the same rate as the Abyss with C1 or like the levels one through three being relatively easy if you have the right type of fit. 
but C4 through C5 is very, very difficult and you really have to bling out your ship and have and make sure you're doing uh, the things in the right order, hitting the triggers. One interesting thing about some of these wormhole PVE sites is that there is no bounty system. So you have to actually individually loot a lot of this stuff. So bringing an MTU is recommended. You can sell that blue loot in high sec for some really high end isk. And yeah, check out that guide down in the description below. And number six is PI or planetary interaction. A lot of my corp mates were very firm believers and PI, and I get it. I've heard all the same comments. You know, it's free ISK, it's passive. Um, once you get it set up once, it's very easy. But I avoided it like the plague the first year of EVE Online because anytime I would try to look into it, the YouTube videos were very long-winded. The EVE University information seemed very convoluted. And when I try to look up information in-game, there's basically zero information as to like what it's used for, how to set it up, anything like that. So I just avoided it altogether. But it definitely helps if you have court mates that have been doing it for years and they've been making a lot of ISK and they can kind of show you the ropes. So now I got it set up on my main as well as a few of my alts. Uh, I'm harvesting some materials that is used for fuel blocks. And that is the nice thing about at least particularly our wormhole, our wormhole planets is that we actually have access to a lot of different materials. So down the line, maybe I'll make a video on how all the PI stuff is playing out because I've only done it for a few weeks now. But um, I would love to see the fruits of my labor and how much this guy really make after doing this for a few months. And number seven is reactions. And this is by far the easiest way how to make some passive isk going on in the background. Um, I've, I did very little to no industry before I joined this wormhole corp. I mean, I probably built maybe five or six things uh, in my entire EVE career and researching is still something I don't understand, uh, at least as of yet. But the nice thing is with these reactions, you don't have to worry about any of that. All you have to do is buy the formulas off the NPC market. It costs 15 million ISK each. So there is a slight barrier to entry ISK wise. But honestly, when you put these materials in and you're waiting out the reaction, you're easily doubling, tripling, or even quadrupling your ISK that you're putting in. Um, these reactions require one fuel block, so oxygen, helium, all that stuff. Two different types of gases, which typically seem to be one more common gas and one gas that's a bit more rare, and then one mineral. You literally just smash them together, you type in you know, how much you want, and then you kind of just wait it out. You put it in the cooker, you wait, and then out pops out the isk. So, um, like I said, this is something I do recommend for some of you guys to do very early on when you join a wormhole corp. Make use of that gas you are harvesting because these reactions sell very well on the market and they are absolutely needed to make any kind of capital ship uh, in the game with the most recent industry uh, updates going forward. So I did forget to mention earlier, this is an Omega only thing. So you do need to have Omega to do this, but it's pretty low SP. You can actually scale into reactions very quickly. And number eight is just your typical mining. You will need to have Omega if you want to fly basically anything larger than a venture. So if you're going to get into mining, obviously I recommend that. But the nice thing about being in a wormhole uh, corp just in general is that at least our wormhole corp has access to a moon and we are able to kind of pull off a big chunk. Maybe I'll do a video on kind of some of the cool visuals with that. But you actually have access to, to moon ores. You have access to a lot of the null sec ores and low sec ores if we have certain connections and those systems are relatively empty. Um, I've even headed kind of like a small little uh, mining expedition into trig space. We actually had a direct connection to one of the, the trig, triglavian systems and we, we were harvesting triglavian ores as well. And that's one of the parts I do enjoy. Mining is one of my guilty pleasures, but because I'm in a wormhole corp, now I basically have access to ISEC, wormhole, moons, uh, null sec ores, low sec, triglavian, like anything I want. Um, obviously you are limited slightly by what the wormhole provides, but having access to everything is really, really nice. All right, and number nine is small gang PVP. So believe it or not, you can actually make a decent amount of ISK doing PVP. Um, it really determines on your wormhole corporation and how they determine looting rights and things like that. But as you can see here, we actually found a Marauder, um, actually a Varger, just really out of place. He didn't have a scout or anything like that, uh, you know, trying to spot us ahead of time. We had to use small frigates because the wormhole that connected us to uh, this Varger required small ships. So I brought a Kikimora. A lot of people brought some other smaller ships like T1 frigates as well. So you can actually land some pretty big kills, you know, flying a really small ship. And the way our corporation operates is typically, for at least from what I could tell, is that if you're a new bro, or if you're someone that's trying to make an effort to learn PvP, you'll have first rights when it comes to looting the wrecks. But if there is any really expensive like faction, uh, abyss, or like officer modules, we do kind of put it like in a big pot. And then at the end of the month, we do this really fun uh, raffle thing, which I actually got quite a few modules, uh, much, much cheaper than I could have like off the Juta market. And speaking of markets, number 10 is just selling stuff on the market or via contracts in your home hole. Cause your, your home hole, believe it or not, it's its own little miniature trade hub. And depending on the size of your corporation, there's always people looking for gas, fuel blocks, uh, pre-fitted doctrine ships. Um, I've had a little bit more success actually selling pre-fitted ships, um, up on contract. And so the market I found, but I cornered pretty well, I would say, it's just selling pre-fitted salvagers because sometimes people lose salvagers 
We're also doing a lot of heavy recruiting in like the Western US time zone as well as Australia. So sometimes people join in, you know, they forget to bring in a salvager, they look on contract, they find mine, they just buy it right away just to save themselves some time rather than going through like a high sec wormhole and, and pre-fitting it and all that stuff uh, ahead of time. So there is, is some is to be made in the, you know, in your own personal corporation. And there, sometimes there's some uh, off contract or off market agreements you can do where you just trade people directly uh, as well. So it really just comes down to some like old school uh, market trading at the end of the day. So that is another way you can make some misc. And that's pretty much it, guys. I would love to hear down in the description below what you guys have learned from this video, as well as your in-game name. I'm also going to be giving away two of the Procure skins that you guys saw uh, in the video today. And personally, those are my favorite scope syndication skins uh, of all the ones that have been released so far. So that's pretty much it. Hope you guys take care and you fly safe.